Richard, thank you for making the time to join me today. Welcome. And thank you for asking me. It's just, it's such a pleasure and an honor. Richard, you have been, I, I want to call you Dr. Richard Bosworth on the episode, on the episode, because <laughs> everyone needs to know <laughs> you are, you have a life of, of expertise and professionalism in the music industry and in music education. And wow, like just to have you in Teach Music Online in our community with so much experience and with such a, a level of expertise in your teaching ability with your students has been so wonderful. I'm just so thrilled you've been with us now for almost well, for four years, four years, basically. Yeah, it will be, yes. It will be going on four years. Yes. It's amazing. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, okay. So there's always so much to talk with about you. And I, I want to start with what does Richard Bosworth's life look like as an online studio owner? compared to what it looked like previously. Now, I know you've always loved teaching and you are an optimist, <laughs> but maybe what are some of those benefits and why you've stuck with the online format? Well, I can tell you just comparing to where I came from and where I am now, it's really, it's in a whole nother universe. You know, it's just something, it's totally transformed. It's, it's a very 21st century studio. And I'm very proud of it. In fact, I consider it like a challenge because when people say, you know, oh, you know, they compare, you know, online versus in person, and I can marshal up all the facts and everything. I mean, I'm, I'm very, I'm almost bold, you know, so, and I have a good way with words. So usually I can make people take pause and, and think about what it is that they're saying. And, um, but anyway, the, the studio has grown, um, just everything is, is automated basically you know between billing and and the scheduling and and uh, uh sending out letters and all that stuff because everything is all these pre-templates and stuff like that it's just there's a lot of uh prelim work that goes into it but it's like when you set up a piece of machinery we're setting up our machinery and once this is set up you know it, it, it is arduous it takes a long time if it's done carefully you know and with intention so if it's done the right way uh, you will definitely uh, have a, a, something that is stable and that it operates automatically. That So it's worth spending the time in the prelim work to get this whole mechanism going so that you can trust it and that it works just flawlessly, you know, all the time. You know, it's, just, it, it's, it's wonderful. Um, I actually have more social time and more things to be with people. You know, I mean, heck, I'm even traveling. I mean, when I was just in New York and Philadelphia these past times. Here it is, I'm, you know, I have a piano in every port. So you just go and, and you teach there. In fact, even my one friend in New York, he didn't have the right kind of piano and everything. So he said, he just bought me a digital piano. <laughs> but I mean, we got it, you know, from, from a, a reputable company where it was very cheap and everything. But still, all I need is just something very simple. I, I have this down to a science in terms of my travel gear. I have a, a, um, a roller board that I bring in that I have uh, in Ziploc bags, they're all marked and everything, what goes where and everything. And, and I'm even able to put my clothes in there, as well as I have a, a computer bag you put underneath the seat with some clothes as well. So I'm able to do everything without checking anything aboard the plane. So it's, Wow, you really have automated the process. <laughs> I've tried. I mean, it's still, yeah. everything's a work in progress. I, I, I found out there are you know, many ways to, to do things. In fact, the, the sense of community and the support that, that I get from uh, the people here online, you know, at, T, at TMO, I know, you know, I should probably say Teach Music Online because we're always used to acronyms TMO, but anyway, Teach Music Online is, is the best thing that's ever happened to me, not only professionally, but personally, I've gained a lot of new friends, uh, people that uh, I, I'm very picky as I get older. I mean, I'm very aware as I'm one of the older folks in, in the group. So um, I have to be careful on who I'm around and the kind of energies and everything. And everybody is so positive there. I just love the people. And it's, it's, it's a big credit to you, Carla, because you're such a sunshiny person. And, and you're also positive. I think we, you know, uh, people that, that are, are of like mind, they attract one another. I, I really believe that. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I have felt, you know, why is our community this way? And I, I do think that we started initially with this core group of teachers who were in it to impact students 
positively and in it to have growth as a business. But first and foremost, how can we be the best teachers? How can we be as good as, you know, online, if not better? And that uh, excitement and energy around continuing that professional development has just brought in and uh, attracted those types of teachers and experts. Right. But also, if you, if you look at just the basic skeleton, the framework of how Teach Music Online is, is structured, I mean, look at, Carly, what you've done in terms of adding all these courses. Wow. It blows me away. I mean, there isn't, there isn't any stone that's not unturned. I mean, you, you, and, and you're constantly evolving. I'm, I'm really excited what the next few years are going to bring. You know, I'm, I'm in this permanently. So, I mean, you know, five years, 10 years from now, it's just so... It's just, it's just, it's a fabulous experience. And it's something I would recommend to everybody. I'm always very enthusiastic about it because how can I not be, you know? Oh, it's so great. And, and I love that enthusiasm for wanting to learn. You have been such a, a great example of someone who has had this successful career, but is also never finished learning and trying new things and then helping others learn those things because you know what it's like to have been in their shoes where you go, I don't know how to do this. Yeah, exactly. But you know what? I'm also, I consider myself um, somebody who can help lead, especially for some of the older people, because I'm, I'm, I'm one of the cases of, you, you know, you, you can teach an old dog new tricks. So I, it, it is, yes, it, it can be, the learning curve can be arduous and everything, but the results are not only great, but they're super fantastic. And so mm-hmm. why not just go through the trouble and everything? Just make sure you're organized about things, you know, especially time management. And so that, that's extremely important. Yeah. And that, that's what I've learned, especially the mental set and time management mm-hmm. from TMO is extre- that's that sets the tone for everything. It does. It, it can make or break your life, really. Yeah. Just like when I was, you know, when you were uh, uh, emailing me and everything and all this stuff going on. And then I, then I remember I, in, in one of the posts, uh, you know, you had said, you know, some of these things that you were doing. And, and, and I remember I said, how do you find time to sleep? You know, <laughs> it's just amazing. <laughs> but you, again, you're very well organized. And that, that's what's so beautiful about it. Yeah. Oh, I try to be. And I, yeah. you know, behind peel the curtain back and I was running around this morning. I mean, this morning I've been trying to exercise more. So I said, okay, we're going to get up so early. Well, I didn't get up so early and the girls are crawling in my bed, you know, at seven 30, I said, okay, let's go downstairs, get Uh, them all food, run and do a quick exercise, run upstairs and get dressed for my first podcast interview this morning. So, you know, no one has it all together. Nobody, nobody has this perfect formula. And I think my best you know, tip for that is to just show up wherever you are. Like when I am with my family, I am with them. When I am with TMO members, I am there for them, helping them in whatever way. When I am with a student, like I'm not thinking about other things, other things will take care of themselves. And for those of us with that kind of chaos that it feels like sometimes Mm -hmm. just show up when you can. Right. And it's also fun trying, you know what I'm saying? Because the, the goal and the, the mission of this group is so, uh, it's so wonderful. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an, an ennobling experience. It really is. And uh, I, I'm so proud to be a part of it. And I, I, like I said, I, I, I know that my business, especially during the height of the pandemic, it would have died. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, people like Pam, Jack, and I, I mean, we're some of the older people here, but we can attest to the fact that this does actually work and it works really well. So, okay. That's a perfect segue into the pandemic Mm -hmm. brought you online, but Richard, you chose to stay online. And when your students said, Hey, we want to come back. You said, I'm sticking to online lessons. So tell us why did you choose to stay with the majority of your studio being online? Well, first of all, I, I really like the idea of the extensive outreach because it's not only just within the local community, but I mean, mm. I, I have people from, you know, I teach in Singapore. I have people that I teach in Paris, France. So the thing is, is that the global outreach is just, it's, it's, I, I'm glad that, that, that it's there, the internet, you know, the internet really is our friend. Technology is our friend. We just have to learn how to embrace it the, the, the right way and with the right attitude. <clears throat> now, the other thing is, I find that um, um, uh, 
it, the mechanism for you know uh, filtering out the, the kinds of students and everything it works very very well online because the way I have everything structured with my website and the copy that's there uh, as well as things that are on uh, listed on my studio policy in Google Forms I mean you know that I'm a very intentional teacher and and actually I don't want to be just for anybody you know I, I'm looking for a very specific student and 90% of the time I get inquiries that are serious. It's not bargain basement shopping. And I really do appreciate that because that aspect of, again, building, you know, spending time with the, the process of finding students, the onboarding process really does pay for itself in the long run. It really does because it saves you time in the end. It really does because now I just get serious inquiries. I don't get inquiries all the time. Like <clears throat> maybe you know, some people get them like maybe five times a week. I might get maybe a, a two or three a month, you know, maybe, maybe one, maybe some months are better than others, maybe one a week. But in general, I know that the, when they contact me, they're really serious. Mm, because they've gone through uh, <clears throat> learning about you and discovering what you offer and knowing you're online. So, okay, for that student who reaches out to you, they, you know, so many teachers say, gosh, they reach out to me. Then I tell them I'm teaching online and they're out the door. You have made it very clear that you don't take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. um, you don't take no to online as an answer, yeah. you know? So what, what is, what are those steps you walk them through to get them online? Because you've been very successful with this. What I do is I filter all the, there are two sets of inquiries. There are ones that are, are direct where they want to know, do you teach in person? And there are other ones that are just looking for lessons. So for the ones that are, that are indirect, they're just looking for lessons. I started off by, I mean, in a sense, I don't like to say tricking them into a video call, but what I do is I, I, I'm very enthusiastic. First of all, there's that likability factor. And once in a while, I like putting, you know, exclamation points in the letters and when I respond back, because even though I have a template for, for these people, I always have the beginning and the ending paragraphs with my, you know, it's just like a couple sentences and they're very easy to write. So that way it feels personalized and not, and not like it's a form letter. So anyway, with the ones that are indirect, what I do is I, I tell them, hey, they, let's let's get together uh, on a phone call. Hey, better yet, I always say better yet, comma, <laughs> we'll do a uh, let's try a video call. And then that's how I get them into it. Uh, for the ones that are, you know, looking just for in-person, I tell them that, that I, I very direct in my response to them and say, I do not teach in person, but I tell them about the merits of online uh, stuff and everything. And I haven't had one person turn me down yet. I mean, I, it, it's been wonderful. In fact, when they have a chance to really get to the point where they have the interview, um, actually, it's really a demo, but I, I like to call it an interview because it's my branding. Mm -hmm. But when they get to that point, they see my setup and everything. And I've, I've really invested a lot of time and money and just, just carefully considering things so that it's a seamless experience. When they see it, the, all the comments usually say, oh, this is way more than I expected. And they, mm -hmm. a lot of times they'll say, and this is their, I mean, mo most people say, I can live with this. They actually say that I can live with this. So I find that, I find that fascinating. So for me, uh, it's a challenge. Uh, it's a nice challenge. I, I don't, um, yeah. I don't shy away from these kinds of things. I'm, I like to say, I, I'm much more bold than I used to be. And I'm not apologetic. I'm very proud to be an online teacher. And when I describe even to people that, you know, when I visit and everything, oh, what are you doing with your life and everything? I said, oh, I do online teaching. And they're fascinated by it. So mm -hmm. I, I'm fascinated just to, to be in this position. So I try to bring that across to prospective students, the fascination of it and the possibilities oh. are just limitless. I mean, the, the sky's the limit, really, basically. Oh, it's so good, Richard. It is so good because teachers forget, have forgotten, the energy they need to sell something, to market themselves. And you are just, you are naturally an optimistic person, but you have learned that you need to be excited about online lessons. We aren't apologetic. We aren't convincing. <clears throat> we are just genuinely happy to be offering something so valuable mm -hmm. that they can take lessons from Paris or their grandma's house mm -hmm. or their basement. And we have to find ways to communicate that from the moment they email you. Right, but you don't have to cajole anybody. The, the biggest thing is, is that I, I believe in the product of what I'm selling. 
if I don't believe yeah. in it, then, then you have to, it's kind of half-heartedly, you know, approaching this. But if you believe in the product, which I really do, you know, hook, line, and sinker. I mean, I, uh, it's, that is really half the battle won. If you believe in what you're doing, you don't have to be apologetic because I mean, I, right. proud. I remember there was an interview with Dr. Randall uh, Faber and uh, it was on, on one of these masterclass series, you know, for one of the music teachers associations. And he was remarking that he was on a panel of judges where they were, and it was a big international competition. And there was, there was an, ent uh, an entry there of somebody who had only done online lessons in preparation for this big competition and they won the competition. And, and he, so even he said, you know, you, you know we, we all have kind of our old fashioned views and things that, you know, old habits die hard, as they say. But the thing is, is that you cannot, if you take a second look at it, you can't deny the effects that, that, that it has on people. I mean, the online community and the support we have, as well as the technology associated with it, in a way, the pandemic was a blessing in disguise, because I think eventually, had we not had it, maybe five, 10 years from now, we would have all these things now. But because, you know, necessity being the mother of invention, you know, we all had to go online mm -hmm. for those couple of years. Look what we have now. I mean, the video conferencing platforms are unbelievable. I mean, it's just like I use this one platform, you know, Forte Lessons. And it's really when the internet is cooperating, when upload and download are really working well, Carly, it's like being in the room. It's literally like being in the room. I mean, and especially the attention to detail, playing playing the piano, since it's not a legato instrument, you know, the sound dies away. To be able to capture that, to you know, to when it dies away, and and the subtle effects with with pedaling, it actually does it. I mean, it's mind blowing. It, that's what that's what that's why I'm so excited because because I can yeah. produce an experience that is really the only difference between that and and uh, online and in person because you can actually hands on touch somebody and everything and mm -hmm. okay but you know again what I do it to uh, I do a little bit of a hybrid situation I mean, all of the in person you know on I mean I mean the online stuff with one on one is online okay the yeah. in person would be in some groups like for, we, have, we have group group events like recitals and some master classes and that adds really a nice touch to it and still even once in yes. a while i it's my it's my um uh, preference sometimes i just do something online you know because up until december of last year i did everything online inc including the groups and, and stuff mm -hmm. you know, the uh, studio events it is it, coming from you, you know, it is encouraging for teachers to hear how effective they can be. And I want teachers to know you are using OBS. You are able to show your pedaling. You have multi views. You do bring up music on an iPad that you can right. be annotating on. And all of those little tweaks, you know, are what make that experience so much better for the student. That, that's right. That's right. The more seamless that you can make it in terms of it's just, you know, no must, no fuss. And it's just like being there in person. Like, cause it's, yeah. like I said, the only difference is in person, you can actually touch them. But even then some students like don't like to be touched. That's fine. But the point is, is that the human touch sometimes is nice. That's why I think a balance sometimes is, is really good. But again, for online, you know, for the one on one online mm -hmm. it's really i mean i will never i mean it's a close chapter in terms of in person i've turned down a number of people now that only want in person although i you know what i've been able to convince people even the ones that they take a, a demo lesson from me and they say this is really cool i really love it and they say you know it's very effective i just had an, a, an adult student the, the other week he was very interested but again his preference was to be in person and that was fine he did not yeah. say to me oh online is inferior. So I really you know, I have to do, you know, in person, he said, it's, it, it, he was saying it's really effective, but he just preferred yeah. in person. That's okay. It's like yeah. offering somebody a, 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 a plate of chocolate chip cookies. I mean, you think everybody would like chocolate yeah. chip cookies. Not everybody does. So that's okay. Yeah. yeah. And it is. And we're not, yeah. to, we're not going to be offended by it because again, yeah. we know the value of what we offer. Right. I, I wanted you to share a little bit about our open mic events inside Teach Music Online. We're shifting gears a little bit, but we've never talked about this on the podcast. And it's such a cool thing that we offer inside the Teach Music Online membership, These op this opportunity for anyone in our community to hop on a live session mm -hmm. and perform. Can you share a little bit about when we started those and how it's been going? Oh, we've been going for quite a while. Uh, and, and I, I, you know, Carly, I, I'm not sure when we started. I know we, you yeah. know, it, it was- I mean, three years first, probably. 
I'm sure it's probably at least, you know, two and three quarter years to three years. Yeah, I would say that because yeah. I know the first year we we're still getting adjusted and everything. I, I I dare say, I think even within the first six months, we, we uh, you know, four mm -hmm. years, we were still doing a couple of things infrequently. And then we got into onto a, a role where we were doing it you know, at almost one every like four or five weeks. Now, we've kind of we're just exploring in terms of yeah and, and the availability when people have free time. But anyway, I really um, uh, I, I find them really fun. Uh, we we now have it to the point where we have topical things, you know, we discuss certain topics or sometimes certain themes during the year, like we have a, a December 11th open mic coming now. Uh, in fact, we're going to have two sessions because that way nobody can say I can't yeah. attend them, you know, at least yes. it, it provides a possibility. And I really want to you know, do that now. I mean, just because, you know, Sundays, Mondays and Tuesdays are my days off. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I basically can do that. In fact, if we had to have three, I'll do three, you know, <laughs> but they're yeah. really, really fun. Um, I just like the fact that it's, it's a forum for learning new things. Um, you, you discuss different viewpoints. Uh, we've gotten into some pedagogical discussions and we've gotten into some things about literature and, uh, you know, things about, you know, performance and, and it just, you know, the, the world of music is right at our fingertips and everything. And it's so fun to, to hear people um, chime in there. And uh, it's, uh, I, I've learned quite a lot. It's very humbling, actually. I mean, people always say, oh, well, you know, you, you know a lot and everything. No, it, just because I have a doctor's degree, I'm always learning. I'm a, a perpetual student. I really am. And I really enjoy, I, I, and these are really relevant topics we talk about, things that will really help uh, people with their studio. I find it personally inspirational. Absolutely. And I think others do too. I mean, I just love yeah. posting something where um, it's it's a new kind of interaction where, you know, we're live, you know, online and we can um, just express ourselves, you know, either, you know, through performance and we're not expecting everybody to perform. I mean, just, just if somebody wants to chime in and give an opinion on something or, you know, but again, it's just wonderful to have people there and the contributions of of everybody's experiences with with their own particular musical journey, I think is mm. great. It's great. I think teachers really enjoy getting to share a piece of their, you know, music with others because uh, we don't get as many opportunities to perform when we're working in building businesses. Some do. We have a lot of teachers who who perform quite frequently, but some that don't. And I think that's a really fun opportunity and because it's online you know you don't feel as nervous there's just it's very low pressure low key well, do you know what there sharing. are friends because i've gained so many new friends through this it's just my friends why wouldn't i have fun with my friends you know I, i'm to the point now mm -hmm. where i don't care if i make a mistake it's a big deal it doesn't matter what is what is it i mean what is perfection anyway i mean yeah. you argue that till the cows come home you know? but the point is is that uh even with my students i mean i in fact i have fun making mistakes in front of my students because it lets them know i'm human but i but the thing is is that i know how to correct them that's the only difference yeah oh it's so good well this is just it's so fun i think something i want to leave with or conclude with is the idea that anyone can do this. Um, any, any teacher listening who is, you know, maybe they're just fresh out of college and they're like, which path do I choose? Right. <laughs> or maybe they've been teaching for 20 years and they're at a university and they want to leave and work on the weekends instead and have more flexibility. Right. Just this, you know, what encouragement can we give them to yes, try something new and, and uh, believe in yourself a little. Exactly, exactly. And I think that the, the more that we get the word out there, like through social media and various things, I think the, the people, I mean, because everybody uses social media now, and I think that's very, very helpful. It will really get us uh, thinking about things and taking pause. I think it's very mm -hmm. important for um, for your own professional development and personal development, really. It's uh, because you're opening yourself to new experiences. And mm -hmm. uh, and, and believe me, if I can do it, anybody can do it. And, and I always tell people just to keep it simple and everything. Because remember, I didn't grow up. You see, you know, you're a lot younger than I am. And so you, you grew up with computers. I mean, we didn't grow up with it. I mean, I wrote my my document dissertation stuff on uh, computers were just coming out. I remember the old yeah. floppy disk, you know, and, and you put, you know, one was the actual operating system. The other one was your hard drive. And you stuck it in the IBM, you know, and everything. And that that's how I did it. It's just... <laughs> so the thing is, is that it, I always say, you know, the KISS principle, you know, keep it super simple and just start with, and, and again, you know, getting involved with an organization like T 
Teach Music Online or any other organizations, just make sure that you that you remain active because we're there to help mm -hmm. one another and everything and take advantage of the sources that they have available. Because yes. uh, th that's the one thing. I mean, Carly, it must freak you out sometimes when you look at where where you, when you started Teach Music Online and look where you are now and all the things that that are in you know the course modules. It's it's yeah. amazing. It's amazing. It does freak me out. <laughs> but we're glad that we're really glad that we have you at the helm because it it's uh you know you're somebody who really likes to explore and you use your time wisely. I know that because to be able to get these courses out and various things, it's amazing what you do. And oh, uh, you. I'm very humbled by it. I really am. But it's actually very inspirational to me because uh, I know that I can do it. I mean, when I see other teachers, especially my age, that say they can do it, they say, Well, yeah, I can learn this something new, whatever it is, you know, I guess I can do it. If they can do it, I can do it because it's just because you know that it's possible because yeah. you see from start to finish, like Pam Jack is a great example of that. You know, I mean, all the things yeah. she, as, as the diversity of her studio, it's really, it, she's one of the most quintessential examples I know of, of really fine online teaching. Oh, so thank you so much. I, I like you love learning new things and new skills and it it's exciting. Um, to find ways to do things better, more efficiently, um, more productively. And then in turn, I, my you know passion is how to incorporate that into or, or communicate that um, right. in courses and in videos. And I love it. I mean, it is so fun for me to learn something and go, wow, teachers can use this to teach better or I, well, teachers can yeah. use this to run their business smarter. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the posts that we have in TMO, I mean, the ideas that are brought forth, I mean, people, I really like the fact lately people are putting in their ideas and in various things like, or, or I need help on such and such, and everybody just pulls together and everything and all the ideas and the resources that become available, it, it's really mind blowing. It's it's fantastic. So I, I really like being a, a part of a, a very dynamic group and mm. everything. And there's no such thing as a stupid question. Never. You know, just I, I'm always telling people, feel free to participate, you know, because that's what we're here mm. for. Oh, it's so good. Well, thank you, Richard, for sharing some of your time today. I I just appreciate everything you contribute always. Thank you so, so much. If teachers want to learn more about you, what is your, can you share your website with us so they can contact yeah. you or reach out? Yeah, yeah. Well, my website is, is uh, richardbosworth.org. Uh, dot org, or if you even put in dot com, richardbosworth.com, it goes to the dot org. It's like a okay. point. And yeah, uh, yeah I, I have my, you know, my Facebook page, my Instagram stuff. In fact, I have two types of Facebook pages. I have one just for my professional performance stuff, and then another one for the teaching. Then I have the Instagram account. And then I have uh, two YouTube channels, a performance one, and for my teaching. So. Amazing. Okay. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks.